Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu and in this video I'll show you how I've used this soft, squishy like uh, polyurethane to make these Iron Man masks. So a lot of like improvising or testing was involved. So um, I'll go through all the steps of what I've learned and explain you how to do like a good finished part. So it all starts with the mold. So um, I'll be coding uh, the pre-mold that I had to make like a new mold. So the first layer would be the gel coat. If you want to see more details about mold making, you can check out my YouTube channel. Um, you'll find some mold making videos on there as well. So the first layer is the gel coat and then you wait for it to go tacky. And what I would normally do with making molds is using the uni mold system. So it's better to make like stable, strong molds in one go. But I decided to try this out. So it's a cheaper option to go with regular fiberglass and just like the normal laminating uh, polyester. So one thing to keep in mind when using these um, like basic regular uh, polyester resins is not to build up too much, too much thickness in one go because it could go exothermal and warp your mold around. So a good solution is to apply a first layer, wait for it to cure, then you sand it back down just to have like a good um, mechanical grip for the next layers coming on top. And then I did this in three times. So it's quite a nice buildup. It's a strong mold and it's a stable mold that way. So as you can see here, the last layer was applied. So it's a finishing layer and about four layers of 450 grams uh, fiberglass was added. So a pretty thick, strong mold uh, for this piece because there could be a lot of pressure being involved with the polyurethane expanding. So you'll see later on in the video what I mean with the polyurethane expanding. So as you can see the mold is about five millimeters thick. Um, I, I don't know in inches how much that would be but you can check it on Google. Um, so the next step is to add a release agent. So the Easy Lease is quite a, a common release agent for various types of um, of resins and coatings. So I'm using this one. Uh, there are specific uh, release agents for polyurethanes as well. I think it's APW. Um, I'll try to add it in the description down below. So what I did there is to make a closed mold, I have to finish the part first. So I've started with making a first uh, part with fiberglass into the mold. And then I'm just like uh, filling the volume with expanding polyurethane foam. So this is not sped up, as you can see it goes quite rapidly, so it's a heavy rea reaction going on there, and it's a foam that will expand about 16 times in volume. So this is a polyurethane. Um, you cannot compare it with building polyurethane because this is more dense in its cells, like the structure of the foam. Um, but that way we were able to fill the entire void and then on top we'll add a second layer. So here I'm just trimming everything up to the side. Uh, like this would be the size of the part that I want to create with the polyurethane. Um, so I'm just cutting everything flush, sanding all the polyurethane uh, flush and then I'm just using some masking tape all around the edge to avoid having uh, the polyester resin that we'll be using right here dripping off the sides because this part still has to fit into the mold that we've made previously. So what I'm using is a sheet of plastic and then I'm laminating the shape roughly um, onto the plastic first and then I apply it onto the foam that we had. So once cured, I can sand it down just to remove all the raised edges because we want a smooth surface, uh, surface as well right here because the surface will be exactly the same on your parts that you'll be making in polyurethane. And so the thing is, it's very hard to sand or to correct mistakes on the uh, polyurethane parts. If you're making fiberglass parts, you can still sand it down, add some bondo like I did here, uh, but you cannot do that on the finished parts. It's exactly the same with silicon, for example. So I'm using um, an easy to sand uh, top coat here. So it's, um, it's like very easy to sand and to bring it to a hi higher level of gloss. So I sand it till 800 because I knew that the mold will still have to be sanded after that. So I've added some release agents to make sure that nothing would stick onto this part or the mold. And then it's just again like in the beginning applying the gel coat and then applying multiple layers of 
um, the fiberglass. So the easier thing here is that it's an easy shape. So it's like just a rectangular shape. So I'm preparing everything on a sheet of plastic again and then apply it on top. So I've added, I think, the same amount of layers. And like I said in the beginning of the video, it's very important because a lot of pressure can build up with polyurethane expanding. Um, so that's why it's very important to have like a stiff and a strong mold. Ideally, you would have like aluminum molds that are CNC milled, but due to the expenses of that, um, mostly it won't be an option for like small numbers of parts that you're trying to make. So here you see the backing releasing quite easily. Then it's just a matter of like bring it back to a high gloss um, and then adding a few venting holes so that the poly polyurethane can expand. Uh, but wouldn't create like too much pressure inside the mold. You want pressure, but not too much. So I'm adding some release agent again, and now I'll show you the steps that I went through. So this was the first part, then we got a little bit better. This is the second part. And then like we improve along the way to find like an even better part till the um, best looking parts, in my opinion, you could get with a top, it's like called the um, in-mold coating that will create like a nice uh, soft and shiny plasticky feel uh, onto your part. So here's how it goes. So I've got the polyurethane E60 foam. I've used it previously in a tutorial that was quite popular. And so I decided to make like a better video now just to explain how everything goes. Because the first video was shot, I think it was around six years ago, and the quality was like it was shot on a, on a potato. So it's very bad quality, so this should be a big improvement. So how everything works is that you don't need a lot because it will expand quite a bit. So I'm using the A components. So it's, um, it's called V-Sure, so the brand I'll add it into the description down below. Uh, it's from Voschemi Benelux and you can probably order it online. So that was the first part and it's like the big unknown to begin with because you don't know how much it will expand and how big it will get. So I have did the second try and I was just running a bit short in uh, the amount that was needed to be used. So now that I know how much uh, volume I need to fill, I can start doing it with the closed mold. So. Um, so you gradually go up and then when you find the perfect recipe, you can start closing the mold. And I was running like a bit short to create like a good amount of pressure here because the pressure is important to create like a nice skin on your part. So this was like, I would say like a good result, but I was looking for something a bit more shiny, a bit more like uh, finished. Uh, the good thing with this is that you can go through a lot of like prototyping stages in a short time because it cures quite rapidly. So I think I did the molding after around 20 minutes, then it's like in a B stage, nicely cured. So this means that it will cure uh, a bit more once it's out of the mold, but um, it's easy to handle now and remove it from the mold. So now the big improvement is using the um, in-mold coating. So the in-mold coating will create that nice um, almost, almost like gel coat finish. So it's very, you can compare it to a gel coat, but made out of polyurethane to create those like shiny skinned uh, polyurethane soft part, parts. So I was a bit shocked to see how thick it was. So it's like a thick bondo, uh, but once mixed uh, with the catalysts, I think it was around the mixing ratio is five on one. Uh, I've mixed about 150 grams for the two parts and then you can apply it. It's like a bit of a jam. It's a honey texture, uh, textured um, residue that you apply onto your mold and it will cure quite fast as well. So you have to move quickly, make sure everything is ready and then you can proceed with the steps that we did previously. It's pouring the polyurethane that will expand. So. You want to have the in-mold coating in a tacky stage, but cured enough to create like a nice chemi chemically bond between the soft foam that will expand and the shell that you created around it. So the hard part was mostly removing the eyes. Um, I was running short of materials, but if I would want to make it better, I would apply two coats of the in-mold and then do the, uh, the casting of the um, 
expanding foam at the end. So very important is to label your molds because I will probably forget in six months how much I've used. So here you can see in grams how much was used of each um, substance. So here is the results. It's a squishy soft Iron Man mask. So this could be used for furniture. Um, I would think of, of something that needs some textures around a part that needs to be soft like grips and so on. So uh, this is a result and it will come back to its shape after you um, pushed it. So final step would be trimming off the edges. I did it with a piece of sharp scissors and this is the result. So I hope you like this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next one.